Back here inside the campus of High Point University and Willard Stadium, our score through six fall, four to three, North Carolina Central with the one run edge. On um, the scoreboard, four, seven, and two for North Carolina Central, three, six, and one for High Point. As the Panthers look like they're going to call on their second left-hander of the day, it's the left-hander Matt Hodges as he takes over. So Cooper Jeffers exited and Harrison Smith. So this is going to be the fourth pitcher used. So Garrett Letchworth's day is done, and they're going to go to left-hander Hodges to take over. Hodges is the senior. And they're hoping he can just keep things at bay right here for high point. The last thing you want to do is allow a run. You just got back to it in a run. And now if Hodges comes in and gives up anything, it's very important for him to keep it going right here and keep North Carolina Central off the board. As we're in the top half of inning number seven, Hodges from the first base out of the rubber, lefty on lefty. First pitch swung on, ground ball, third baseline, charging hard, one hop throw in time. That is a nice scoop on the receiving end of that by the first baseman for the Panthers, J.J. Woodard. Also a very good play overall by the third baseman as he just fielded it, made a strong throw on one hop, one away. Well, that's exactly how you want to start if you're Hodges, one pitch, one out. One away and nobody on base in the Eagles half of the seventh inning. Right now, North Carolina Central still up by a run. First pitch is high and outside, and the count 1-0. and As it's the number nine hitter in the North Carolina Central lineup, Bryce Hernandez, as it's 8-9-1. and one. So Fish Fault was just retired. Hernandez at the plate, left side. Next pitch is upstairs and off the plate, and the count even. So for Hernandez, looking to get something going here for the Eagles in their half of the seventh inning. Hodges from the first base side of the rubber, lefty on lefty. Next pitch is out in the outside corner, just catching the black, according to home plate umpire Randall Doolin. And are counting out two and one. On deck is Carter Williams, so once this at bat is over, back to the top of the lineup we go as the next pitch is fouled away. Fouls it off behind the plate, count even. So for North Carolina Central, try to get something going in this inning, but with the catcher Fishville already going down on one pitch, and now Hernandez down in the count, as that one is low at the knees, good take, and the count full. We're in the top of the seventh inning, and it is a one-run lead for High Point. Or check that, the Eagles. The next pitch is swung on and fouls it off. Down the left field line, sky high again. Count holds it full. Hernandez digging back in from the left side. Once again, it'll be a payoff pitch. Swung on, grounded right back up the middle, positioned perfectly on to first in time, and they get the second out here in the top half of the seventh. That time, good decision to have the second baseman, Nick Niarco, is playing almost straight, even up the middle, just to the right side of his second base bag. It worked perfectly for the second out. So after Hernandez hit it into the teeth of the shift, back to the top of the lineup we go for Carter Williams. And this is exactly why they went to Hodges. All three hitters so far in this inning have been for the left side of the plate. As he looks at a fastball on the outside edge, called first strike. Again, digging in from the left side of the plate, Williams. The 0-1 comes home. Off the plate a bit high and away in the count even, 1-1. One and one. We're in the seventh inning, four, seven, and two for North Carolina Central, beating three, six, and one for High Point. Next pitch is swung on and slashes it foul down the left field line, and the count now quickly is one and two. Four, three, North Carolina Central up by a run. Williams staying in from the left side. They'll set up in. Now they move away, and the pitch is high and away, and the count now two balls and two strikes. Again, digging in from the left side of the plate. 
It'll be a 2-2 home from the Panthers left-hander. Swung on, hit in the air to left field. No problem here. Settling underneath it, making the call, putting it away well, shy of the track. It's say a check, and that'll do it for North Carolina Central. A nice, easy one, two, three inning for Hodges as he's done his job keeping him off the board. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. Go to seventh inning stretch time, bottom of the seventh, four, three, North Carolina Central up by one. Welcome back inside Willard Stadium on the Campside Point University on this beautiful night for baseball. On this Tuesday evening, we go to the home half of the seventh. Our score, 4-3 North Carolina Central, but we have a nail biter as we hit the home stretch. High point started out with the 2 nothing lead. North Carolina Central scored four unanswered, and then high point got a run in their last trip to the plate and cut it back to one. And figuring between these two teams, since they've played in so many tight contests, Figures we're going to have another one here tonight. So for High Point trying to get back in this one, they're down to within one. Now we'll see if they can either tie or even take the lead here in the bottom of the seventh. As it'll be the right part of the lineup they need, the top third, one, two, and three, beginning with Connor Dunbar. So it'll be Dunbar, Wells, and Holt, one, two, and three in the High Point lineup. In case of a potential push bunt, North Carolina Central playing their third baseman in near the cutout at third. First pitch is on the outside part of the plate, called first strike. In the bottom of the seventh, four, seven and two for North Carolina Central, beating three, six and one for high point. Ding in from the left side of the plate, awaiting the 0-1. Dunbar swings, hits it on the ground, right side of the infield, charging, throw to first, in time they got him! Good play that time by North Carolina Central as that second baseman, Maslin, had to come racing in three or four steps across his body, able to make the throw to first, and they get the out. So Dunbar, the speedy runner that he is, is retired, one away. One gone, no one on. Here is Tanner Wells standing in from the right side of the plate. Here comes the first pitch home. It is off the plate just a little bit outside. 1 0. Well, sticking back in again from the right side. Towing the rubber from the first base side. It is the pitcher. Here comes the 1 0. And it caught him. It hit him on the inside corners. It looked like it went off the left thigh. So heading down to first on the HBP, taking one for the team, is Tanner Wells. So he is on first with one man out. That was supposed to be a fastball out and away, and clearly it was anything but that as it tailed back towards the inside corner way too much. Wells gets on, and that is his first hit by pitch of the season. I'm sure he wouldn't like to have too many more of those as he's off first with one away for Travis Holt. So Holt comes to the plate from the right side. First pitch, and did that get him? Yes, it got a piece of Holt. It looked initially like he may have gotten away by pulling his hands inside. Instead, he heads down to first, and in the most unlikely but probably most painful types of rallies, thanks to two consecutive back-to-back hit-by-pitches, High Point now has the tying and lead run on base with only one man out. And so that is obviously going to draw a visit out to the mound from the catcher fish vote. He'll talk things over, try to settle his pitcher down, who after starting off pretty strong, has all of a sudden, this is Googly Amello, after starting strong, getting the first out on just a couple of pitches, he's hit the last two batters consecutively, and now the tying run is in scoring position, and the go-ahead run on first. So now that they finish that meeting at the mound, runners on first and second with one out. For high point, here comes the designated hitter, a man with a lot of power, Daniel Milwe. Yet to hit a home run this season. You could say that about the entire high point team. But he has a chance to give his team the lead. So first and second, one man out. Here we go, big spot in this game. First pitch comes home. Swung on, and he's trying to launch one right there as he fouls it down the right side while out of play, 0-1. As we're in the bottom of the seventh inning, 4-3 North Carolina Central, our score over high point. 
All in one with one out. Standing back in from the right side of the plate. Milwee waiting. It is in the dirt down and away. And the catcher came up looking like he was looking to throw. But the runners weren't too far off their bases. Got back in. And the count is even at a ball and a strike. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Our score, 4-3. to three. North Carolina Central still holding on to a one-run edge. Digging in from the right side. It's Milwee. Swung on. Hit high in the air. Deep to left. This could give him the lead. Back. Track. Wall. It's gone. A three-run shot off the bat of Daniel Milwee. And all of a sudden, we said he had the power to take him yard. And that's exactly what he did. He blasted it over that left field fence. And just like that, in the home half of the seventh inning, HPU six and North Carolina Central four. Not a good pitch that was on the inner third, but that's one thing about Milwee, very strong with the hands. He was able to get to it on the inside third, and he ripped it to left, and that was almost a courtesy chase by the left fielder Williams. As soon as it left the bat, he knew it was going to be trouble. So did the pitcher Guglielmo, and just like that, the bottom of the seventh, 6-4, high point with a two-run edge. And we just said High Point didn't have a home run. There's your first one. And that's their first as a team. First pitch is off the plate, down and inside as he almost hit batter number three on the inning. So a three run home run as J.J. Woodard steps in for Milwee, home run number one on the season. RBI's number three, four, and five. Next pitch is down and away, and the count two and all. And High Point has come back to take the lead on North Carolina Central, 6-4. While we praised them for the fight back, and that's exactly what they just gave the crowd here at Willard Stadium. They fought back from a two-run deficit and are back on top by two. Pitch is off the plate, down and away, 3-0. and all. And now the question is, if you're North Carolina Central, how long are you going to leave Guglio Mello in? He has badly struggled, especially in this inning. He hit both batters, and he surrendered that three-run round tripper. He's also 3-0 to Woodard. We'll see if they give him the green light. Next pitch is on the inside corner. That's the good call to take right there, as that was a decent pitch, 3-1. and one. For Woodard on the season, hitting 429 now. But for Milwee, he just gave a lot of life to this high point ball club. Their offense has been struggling all year, and that was probably one of their biggest moments, if not the biggest, as a 3-1 is cut on and missed, and the count is full. Boy, high point really, really did need that. I'm sure they were tired of hearing about how they hadn't hit a long ball. Well, they just got that monkey off their back, and they just got another big hit with runners in scoring position. As the 3-2 is on the inside corner, and Woodard knew it, he has gone on strikes two away. If you're just tuning in in the bottom of the seventh inning, North Carolina Central had a 4-2 lead enter in this inning. It was 4-3, and now they have just given it up thanks to a three-run home run moments ago to left field off the bat of Daniel Milwee, home run number one on the season for him, and for the Panthers as a team. And it's given HPU a 6-4 edge. So a two gone, nobody on. Next pitch it is on the outside corner. And the new hitter is Sam Zayacek as it's 0-1. In the bottom of the seventh inning, 6-7-1 for high point. Beating 4-7-2 for North Carolina Central. Again, ding in from the left side of the plate. Zayacek awaiting an 0-1 offering. Next pitch is off the plate, down and away, and the count even, one and one. Again, standing in from the left side. Say a check, trust, try to make the pitcher work even harder. It's Googly Mello, who is now in line to take the loss on this game. If the score holds, next pitch is off the plate, high and away, an easy take, two balls and a strike. 
As we're in the bottom of the seventh inning, our score 6-4 HPU over North Carolina Central. Here comes the two ball, one strike pitch. Swung on, hit in the air. Little blooper down the left field line and coming out and racing, I should say, to make the play. Very nice running catch by the shortstop, Joyce, and that'll do it for high point in the inning. But damn, it's certainly done. Two hit by pitches leads to a three run moonshot off the bat of Daniel Milwee. And after seven, high point with three runs in this inning on one hit and they lead it 6-4 to four as we go to the 8th. Welcome back to Willard Stadium on the campus of High Point University. We go to the 8th inning. High Point taking a two-run edge over North Carolina Central, 6-4. Six, 6-7-1 six, for High Point, beating 4-7-2 for the Eagles. The eighth, it'll be the shortstop number 7, Corey Joyce. And as we go to the top of the 8th, it'll be 2-3-4 and four in the Eagles lineup, starting with the shortstop, Corey Joyce. He'll dig in from the right side of the plate. First pitch from Hodges is knee high over the inside corner, 0-1. And in between innings, it looked like Cozart came out and had a word with a couple of the umpires, especially the home plate umpire, and not really sure what that was for. As the next pitch is swung on and fouled away, 0-2. In the bottom of the seventh, 6-4 HPU, they took the lead in the bottom of the seventh on a three-run home run to left, and that was off the bat of Daniel Milwee. So high point now, the two-run lead wants to get the defense of Bergman in there as the next pitch is high and outside, and the count one and two. So Bergman is taking over in right field for high point. As it'll be a 1-2 into the righty swing. Joy swung on, hit high in the air to deep center field, towards the left center field gap. Going to be trouble still going, and is it gone? No, it's a nice running catch that time. That is a tremendous play. At first, the way they reacted, it was hard to tell. It looked like it may have went over the fence, but instead it's the left fielder coming on to make a tremendous catch. And that was Sam Zayacek. You can't say enough. He had to go a long way. He was positioned very close to the left field line. He had to go to that left center field, almost the batter's eye in straightaway center, but made the catch as he crashed into that wall in left center for the first out. Tremendous defensive play there. Next pitch is off the inside corner, and it's 1-0. and So for North Carolina Central, after that first out, despite giving it a ride, they're still going to try to muster up a rally now down to their final five outs. Next pitch is swung on and missed, blew right by him with the high heater, 1-1. One and one. So for the Eagles, it's the number three hitter, Vinny Bailey, so after Joyce gave it a ride, but that fly out, they're still trying to make something of the inning as the next pitch is up and in, two and one. Bailey digging in again from the left side of the plate. Hodges is gone for an inning and a third. As it will be a two one delivery. It is off the plate down and outside in the count, three balls, one strike. Here in the top half of the eighth inning, 6-4 HPU, our score. They lead it by two. 3-1 is swung on and hit in the air. Dunking towards left and unable to make the catch that time. And it falls. It goes behind him down the left field line. So hustling around first, getting into second with the stand-up double that time. A big hit there for Vinny Bailey. He's aboard with one man out. So Zayacek, who just made a tremendous play to rob what would have been at least a double, probably a triple off the bat of Joyce, tried to make his second of the inning, but just could not come up with it. And when the ball trickled behind him just a little down the left field line, that allowed Bailey to hustle into second base. So he's on board with one man out. So a runner in scoring position for North Carolina Central as it's their designated hitter, Josh Brammel. So for high point, we mentioned earlier, Evan Bergman in the game. He's in for Tanner Wells. First pitch is off the plate a bit low. Little away, 1-0 is the count. 
So on the scoreboard now 6-7 and 1 for High Point, 4-8 and 2 for North Carolina Central. Digging in from the right side. Bramble will await a 1-0 offering. Next pitch is on the outside edge, and the count is even, 1-1. One one. As we're here in the top of the eighth inning, if you're just tuning in, High Point was up 2-0. North Carolina Central came all the way back to take a 4-2 lead, only to watch HBU come all the way back themselves, and now lead 6-4. Next pitch is in the dirt down and inside. And the count now 2-1. and one. As Bailey continues to take his lead off second. Brammel standing back in from the left side of the plate. It'll be a 2-1. Fastball borderline call. Didn't get it as the home plate umpire, Randall Doolin, thought it was maybe a little bit high. 3-1. In the top of the eighth, for the Eagles, they have a runner on second with one man out. The three ball, one strike pitch is on the outside edge this time. And Bramble's a little bit inquisitive there. It looked like almost the exact same pitch that was called a ball the first time. He thought he had a walk, but this time it was called a strike. So the count is now full, three and two. As we're in the top of the eighth inning, 6-4, high point with a two-run lead. Well, that's ball four as that's a pitch up and in, and Bramble somehow managed to avoid getting hit. He'll take the jog on down to first with the free pass, and the Eagles not going quietly into this beautiful high point night. They have runners on first and second with one man out. And this will be a meeting on the mound. And now they are going to call to the bullpen again, so this is going to be the fifth pitcher used by High Point. So this will be yet another call to the bullpen. We'll keep it right here on ESPN Plus in the top half of the eighth inning, 6-4. High Point with the two-run lead. And it's going to be the right-hander, Gray Little. He'll come into the game. So he will take over. So Matt Hodges, the lefty, is taken out. Now pitching number 27, Gray. For high point, this is going to be key. You got runners on first and second with one out. They need to get out of this inning. And so Trey Maslin is coming to the plate. And since Maslin, we know how dangerous he can be at the plate. And he has very, very underrated speed. He could certainly beat out a base hit to keep the inning going. They want to make sure they put the right hander in. And that's exactly what they're doing as they call on Little to take on the very speedy Maslin, the number five hitter in the North Carolina Central lineup. If you're just tuning in, we'll give you a quick recap. John Karuba taking you through this one in the bottom of the second inning. High point in what feels now like a million minutes ago. Took a 2-0 lead thanks to a single to left field off the bat of Trent Harris, who since had to leave the game. He gave high point the 2-0 lead. Then North Carolina Central slowly but surely began to chip away. They got it to 2-1 on a fielder's choice. On a double play ball that got away from the first baseman, that allowed a runner to score from second. They then would take the lead as they got another fielder's choice to tie the game. And then a two-run triple by Joyce made it 4-2 North Carolina Central. And that lasted till the bottom of the sixth when High Point got a run thanks to another fielder's choice. And then the big blows came in the bottom of the seventh. Two hit-by-pitch batters consecutively led to a three-run home run. The first, that's right, the first home run that HPU has hit as a team this season. And it was off the bat of Daniel Milwe. And it gives HPU the 6-4 lead. And that's where we stand right now. But North Carolina Central's threatening. They have two men on with one man out. As we are in the top of the eighth inning, 6-4, HPU up by two. As the Eagles dig in from the right side of the plate, it is Trey Maslin, the second baseman. He'll stand in. Bramel is off of first and Bailey off second. Working from the third base side of the rubber, from the stretch, first pitch from Little is down in the dirt away, and the count 1-0. Maslin with his afternoon now 
is standing in with an average of 320 on the season. 6-4 high point with a two run edge. Here comes the 1-0. As he's still keeping a close eye on Bailey at second, it is off the plate, knee high, and the count 2 0. 6 4 HPUR score up by two, trying to nurse this two run lead they were just given in the bottom of the seventh. Certainly don't want to give it back in what would be a nice bounce back win for the Panthers. It'll be a 2 0 home. It is on the inside corner, called for a strike, 2 and 1. Our home plate umpire tonight, Randall Doolin. First base is Lindy Hall. And over at third, it's Jamie Payne. And as again, digging in from the right side, it is Maslin. He'll await a 2 1 offering. And here it comes from Little. Swung on, hit the opposite way down the right field line. But this is going to go foul as it goes into the HPU bullpen. And the count is even 2 and 2. Scoreboard 6, 7, and 1 for the Panthers, 4, 8, and 2 for the visiting Eagles. North Carolina Central digs back in for the right side. Maslin ready to go. Here is the two ball, two strike delivery. Swung on, slow roller in front of the mound. Gonna kick foul at the last second down the third baseline. Count remains 2 and 2. So despite North Carolina Central known, for some work in the power department, they have yet to hit a round tripper. And for high point, they've only hit one. So not a lot of power in this game, but certainly plenty of back and forth moments between these two clubs. As Baslin digs back in from the right side of the plate, once again, he will await a 2-2 offering. Little comes set, getting the sign, the pitch. Swung on, stroke to the gap, left center. This could be Trump, but on the run, it stays up long enough for a nice run and catch that time by the HPU center fielder. And that's Ryan Russell as both runners are forced to retreat for the second out. So you see why they go to the outfield defense late. Both outs in the sitting. There was a tremendous okay, play the field, in the top okay, of the eighth, the first out, out, as that was pretty much robbing of a triple. And on that one right there, it looked like it was ticketed for a couple of RBIs to left center, but it stayed up on a line long enough for the center fielder Russell to get there. Two away and runners still on first and second. This will leave it to Nick Fajardo standing in. First pitch is off the plate, high and away. Runners off, first and second. So it is Fajardo. The next pitch is off the plate on the outside edge. Gets the call, one and one. There have been so many pinch hitters and different switches in this game. Next pitch is high and away, and the count is 2-1. and one. So a little really working himself into a spot here as Fajardo does stand in for the left side of the plate. Two runners off first and second with two men out. Again, here comes the two ball, one strike delivery. It is in the dirt, down and outside, and the count now three and one. Fajardo again digging in for the left side of the plate. So Little is now one ball away from walking the bases loaded with two out. He digs in left side. Once again, the 3-1 is swung on and hit on the ground. Left side of the infield, they go the short way. Nice defensive play that time for high point. It is the shortstop there to grab it. Dunbar as he took it to second himself, and that'll do it for the inning. So, Little, despite walking a very tight rope, was able to get the out. So that'll do it in the inning for North Carolina Central. No runs on a couple of hits and two men left stranded. Go to the bottom of the eighth. 6-4, HPU up by two runs. Back here inside Willard Stadium on the caps of High Point University as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. 6-4, High Point with a two-run edge. We have a new pitcher in the game for North Carolina Central. It's going to be the right-hander Jake Eigner as he comes in. So he gets relieved of Tom Guglielmo, 
who got tagged in the bottom of the seventh, including the, giving up the three-run home run to Daniel Milwe. That right now would be the difference in the game if this score holds. And so it is going to be Eigner now into the game. As we're in the bottom of the eighth, and it'll be 7-8-9 and nine in the HPU lineup, beginning with Ryan Russell. Russell digging in from the right side. 111 average. Still had kind of a rough evening at the plate. First pitch is right over the heart of the plate. Called first strike. In the bottom of the eighth, six, seven, and one for High Point, four, eight, and two for North Carolina Central. The L1 is swung on and fouls it back to the screen behind the plate, and the count quickly, nothing and two. Do we have a sub we play when we win? Six, seven, and one for the Panthers, four, eight, and two for the Eagles. Again, Russell standing in right side. Here comes the 2 is upstairs and inside, and that almost clipped Russell. That would have been High Point's third hit batter in the last two innings. And having already lost two players to injury, I'm sure they're probably pretty nervous about that. The 1-2 delivery comes in, swung on in a high fly ball down the right field line, but shallow crossing over into foul territory and unable to get there that time despite a great effort was Bryson Hernandez. As the count stays alive, 1-2, and two, Russell back to the plate. That ball had a lot of hang time underneath it. It went real, real far up down the right field line, and that almost allowed Hernandez to get there. Just could not quite make the play, and the count holds. Russell digging back in from the right side of the plate. He will await another 1-2 pitch coming from Agner. The 1-2 delivery. Swung on, hit on the ground, routine play across the diamond to first, and they retire Russell, one away. That time for North Carolina Central, it was the shortstop, Corey Joyce, as he took it, and no problem there, made the strong throw, one gone. One away, and nobody on here is Nick Niarchus, standing back in from the right side of the plate. Nearchus replaced Trent Harris all the way back in the fifth inning. First pitch comes in, and it is off the plate at the hands up and inside, 1-0. and On the scoreboard, 6-7-1 and one for High Point, 4-8-2 and two for North Carolina Central. The 1-0 delivery is on the outside corner, and you could see that Nearchus was not happy with that call, just having a little look back at our own plate umpire, Randolph Doolin, and the count even. Again, ding in from the right side, the one ball, one strike pitch. Check swing, did he go? No, he did not on the appeal. So the first base umpire, Lindy Hall, two and one. Again, ding in from the right side of the plate. It'll be a two ball, one strike delivery. Swung on, that's drilled on a line to right center. Going back out, Fears, it splits him, and it goes to the track at right center. And getting into second, motoring his way there as the throw does get away. But the third baseman there to back him up. Standing on second with a one out, well struck opposite field, double that time with a big hit. It was the Arcus at HPU as a runner on second and one man out. So this will set the table up for Rawl as he'll come back to the plate from the right side. Nice job just taking that pitch, fighting it off to the opposite field, and he drove that one well to the right center field gap to get the one out to Bagger. So here is Rawl standing in from the right side. Taking his lead off second is Nearchus. Working from the stretch. Eigner now calls time. Now he'll stand back in from the right side of the plate. First pitch coming in from Eigner is down and off the plate away and low 1-0. and And with that one out double, HPU now even in hits on the score column, 6-8-1 for HPU, 4-8-2 for North Carolina Central. Digging back in from the right side, it's Brian Rawl. He'll await a 1-0 offering. The pitch is off the plate, down it outside again. 2-0 the count. 
Rawls standing in now overall with the 333 average. Again, this is his first game with High Point making his debut out of the number nine spot. He had a big caught stealing back to end the top of the first. Next pitch is down and inside, and that almost got him, and no, it didn't clip him. He somehow managed to avoid getting hit by the pitch, but it's 3-0. and out. Eigner again now starting to maybe lose command a little bit as these first three pitches not particularly close in the zone. Eigner ready to come set on a 3-0. Pitch is right over the heart of the plate. There's a strike and the count 3-1. and one. Rawl again standing in from the right side. He has the Arcus off of second base. Rawl standing in from the right side. He'll await a three ball, one strike delivery. Swung on and missed as that one he was trying to belt out of here. Instead, it tied him up on the inside corner, three and two. You'd see he got tempted, maybe cheated a little on his swing, choked up on the bat, and really gave a good one at that. But the count now back to fall. Rawl standing back in from the right side of the plate. The payoff pitch is down and inside. And so Rawl will head down to first. It's a seven-pitch walk awarded to him. So HPU keeps the rally going. They got runners out first and second with one man out in their bid to get maybe an insurance run or two here in the bottom of the eighth. Back to the top of the lineup we go after the free pass for Rawl. It's Connor Dunbar, the shortstop tonight for the Panthers. He comes back to the plate again. So for HPU, they have Nearchus on second, and now Rawl is down at first. Runners on first and second with one man out for HPU. They have Dunbar coming to the plate for the left side as there's a meeting on the mound. After that walk, they are talking and going over some sides down on the field and probably deciding how they want to approach Dunbar, the lefty. Also to make sure signs aren't being stolen as there's runners on first and second with one man out. So for high point there is Connor Dunbar that is awaiting his turn. And it looks like they're also giving time for someone to get loose in the bullpen as now they're going to have another meeting on the mound. As again, we're in the bottom of the eighth inning, 6-4 HPU. Runners on first and second with one man out. On the scoreboard, 6-8 and 1 for the Panthers, 4-8 and 2 for North Carolina Central. John Kruba taking you through this one, and we're certainly hitting the home stretch now. These are big outs for North Carolina Central. If they give up a run or two here, they're already down by two, as now they're going to take the pitcher Engner out of the game and they're going to go to another right hander so they make another call to the bullpen clearly they must not have liked the matchup that they saw between Dunbar and Egner, so he is out of the game so with Eigner departing they call on yet another pitcher here in the bottom of the 8th inning 6-4 HPU by 2 6-8 and 1 on the scoreboard for HPU and 4 8 and 2 for North Carolina Central. Another recap for High Point. They scored the first two runs of the game. North Carolina Central scored the last four. And then HPU then came back thanks to a three run home run in the bottom of the seventh by Daniel Milwee. And High Point has a 6 4 lead. For the Eagles, they're going to go to another left-hander. So a lot of bullpen changes, especially here this late in the game, where every out is so critical. 6-4 HPU, they still lead by two. Connor Dunbar is at the plate. He is the leadoff hitter. Couple runners on base for the Panthers, Nearchus and Rawl. Boy, if High Point could find a way to even get one more run in this inning, that would be huge with the bullpen. They've been pretty locked down, but again, no such thing as too many runs, especially in a close game like this. 
We know how North Carolina Central can change the game in a hurry. They've done it once already, down by two. They erupted for four in the middle innings and at one point had the two-run lead. They've since given that back and are now trailing by two again, but you certainly don't want to take the chance here. 6-8-1 for High Point and 4-8-2 for North Carolina Central. As it is a left-hander that's coming in the game for the Eagles. And Dunbar is coming to the plate. As it's going to be number 16 in the game for North Carolina Central. It's the left-hander Caleb McCroy. So he'll come in. Runners off first and second and one out for high point. So Dunbar steps in from the left side of the plate. And the lefty McCroy is on the mound. Dunbar stands in. So a big spot in the game, first and second, one out, bottom of the eighth, 6-4 HPU. First pitch is off the plate, just a little bit high and away, 1-0. Dunbar digging back in from the left side of the plate. He'll away to 1-0 offering. As McCroy again needs time. Now Dunbar standing back in. He'll away to 1-0 offering here with HPU up by two, but they have two runners on and one man out. And now they have the runner picked off. Runner at third. They got him in a rundown. Throw back and applying the tag that time for North Carolina Central. Shortstop Joyce, and that is a mistake that cannot happen this late in the game. That one could have been a valuable insurance run. Instead, just a great move by the lefty McCroy, and they caught the runner just going a little bit too far. He got caught leaning. He broke into his stride, and they were able to catch him in the rundown. The only alert play there for High Point is their other base runner. Brian Raw was able to get up to second base with two away. So still not a good out here, but they still do have a two out runner in scoring position as Dunbar stands back in left side as that was a double steal and it just did not work. They caught the lead runner as the next pitch is off the plate down and outside 2-0. But boy, does that change the complexion. If you were in North Carolina Central, you had runners on first and second that you were dealing with with one out for HPU. Now they only have a runner on second with two men out. As it'll be a 2-0 into Dunbar. Lefty on lefty matchup. It is swung on and missed. High heat that time in the count, 2-1. On the scoreboard, 6-8-1 for HPU and 4-8-2 for the Eagles. Dunbar ding back in from the left side. He'll await another two ball, one strike offering here. Hitting just 176 now on the season. The 2 1 pitch comes in. Swung on and missed. Got him to chase and he tied him up down on the inner third. And the count is even 2 and 2. On deck for the Panthers. It is now the right fielder Bregman. If this inning stays alive to that point, we'll see if it will. Dunbar stands in left side as it'll be a 2-2. From the third base side, Wines kicks to the swung on, rocket to the gap left center. This could be trouble and making the nice running catch it straight away left. A great play that time by the Eagles. It was Carter Williams. We talk about his offense, but he put his sparkling defense on display on that play as he puts it away and ends the inning. So nothing but a loud out number three for the Panthers. For HPU, no runs, one hit, no errors. And because of the caught stealing, one man left on. We go to the ninth. Last chance for the Eagles. It's high point six, North Carolina Central four. Top of the ninth inning as we are here at Willard State. It all comes down to this on the campus of High Point University on what has been a great night for baseball and the beautiful campus of HPU. 6-4 our score. High Point trying to nurse a two-run lead as they're trying to edge off North Carolina Central. As Little stays in the game, they're going to trust on him to close this one out. And so we'll see if indeed he can do it. It would be a big home win here for the Panthers. We have a pinch hitter. Yes, there's a pinch hitter in the game for North Carolina Central. It's going to be number three, Alex Ortiz. He will lead things off. 
with a right hander on the mound. This makes sense. You go to the lefty pinch hitter, see if you can get some kind of advantage that way. Little coming set. Ortiz digs in, left side of the plate. Fakes the button, instead takes a fastball up and in at the letters, and the count 1 0. On the box score, 6 8 and 2 for High Point, and 4 8 and 1 for the Eagles. Ortiz digging in for the left side. Here comes the one ball, no strike delivery. It is down and inside again. Good take. And right now, a little, just a little bit too much yank on these pitches right now, 2 0. Ortiz again standing in from the left side, awaiting for the 2-0 offering. It is low with the knees off the inside corner, and Little is in danger of walking the leadoff, man. As we know in baseball, that's usually a cardinal sin. You never want to start off an inning with a leadoff free pass. So we'll see if Little can bounce his way back. 3-0 is right down the middle, called for strike. I'm a little surprised Ortiz didn't seem to be real pleased with that call, but it's 3-1. Again on the scoreboard, 6-8-1 and one for the Panthers, 4-8-2 and two for North Carolina Central. And now the 3-1 is upstairs and inside, and indeed, Little does what you don't want to do. He walks the leadoff man, so Ortiz now is on first. He could try to create something on the base pass, but more importantly for the Eagles, they now have the tying run at the plate, as it's going to be Timmy Fishvote standing in the number eight hitter from the left side. Little ready to go. Ortiz taking his lead off first. Little ready to go. The pitch is on the outside third over the black. 0-1. Strike called by the home plate umpire, Randall Doolin. Again, standing in for the left side of the plate. From the third base side of the rubber, Little coming home, the 0-1 is off the plate a little bit high and away. Borderline in the count even, one and one. Ding back in from the left side of the plate. It is Fishvote the catcher as Ortiz taking his lead off first. In the ninth inning, high point still holding on to a two run lead to us one and fouled straight back to the screen behind the plate. And the count now a ball and two strikes. For HPU, if they get this victory, it would be their first here at home of the season, and it would be a nice way to get rid of the bad taste that was left in their mouths after their home opener that was the 6-2 loss to UNCG. As it'll be a 1-2 home from Little, working from the stretch, swung on and fouls it down the left field line. This will get out into the seats and out of play. So the count remains 1-2. and two. As we're in the ninth inning, North Carolina Central does have the tying run at the plate. Oh, yeah, right. my bad. My bad. No, you're good. And that is in the form of Timmy Fishvote, the catcher. Meanwhile, Ortiz off first. Here comes the one-two again. Little coming set. The one ball, two strike delivery. Swung on and missed. Struck him out swinging. He got him. And High Point moving all that much closer to their first home victory of the season. They've got one out here in the ninth inning with the runner on first. When in doubt, go to your best stuff. And that's exactly what Little did. He blew him right away with the fastball, the high heater, one gone. So thanks to the high hard stuff, one away. It is the number nine hitter in the lineup for NC Central, Bryson Hernandez. First pitch is upstairs and inside. He takes it and the count one and oh. Hernandez again digging in from the left side. Ortiz off first. So again, it's fitting just like in the seventh. The first three hitters of this inning from the Eagles have all been from the left side of the plate against the righty pitcher. Here comes the 1-0. Swung out, and that's drilled to the gap in left, but it stays up long enough as the left fielder was able to get over there. That's Zayacek. Puts it away, two down, and high point just one out away. You know what they say in baseball, the most difficult, hardest out to get, the 27th and final one. But if they can get it, it will be HPU's first home victory of the season. So two gone, runners still on first. And this is going to leave it up to the top of the lineup for the Eagles, Carter Williams. He'll dig in from the left side of the plate. 
against the righty. As he'll get the side first pitch is upstairs and inside, up and in that time, 1-0. and As Little looking to save this one and get what would be a big victory for HPU. Digging in from the left side again, Williams. He will await a one ball, no strike delivery. Ortiz basically now left on guard at first. He can pretty much take second if he wants to on defensive indifference. Next pitch is knee high over the inside edge and the count is even one and one. John Kruber taking you through this one. Our score, HPU, 6-4 over North Carolina Central. 6-8-1 and one for High Point, 4-8-2 and two for the Eagles. Next pitch is swung on and missed, and now High Point just one strike away from getting their first home victory of this young 2019 campaign. Digging back in from the left side, it's Williams. Ortiz off first. Again, completely unguarded as HPU does have the two-run edge. The one-two is swung on and missed. He got him, and there's your ball game for High Point, their first home victory of the season. Your final score here tonight, High Point 6, North Carolina Central 4. And for High Point, the big key in this one, they avoided the problems they had in the first two innings, and then in the bottom of the seventh, a three-run home run that proved to be the difference in the game, and that was off the bat of Daniel Mill giving High Point the 6-4 win. So for our entire Sports League crew, I'm Jack Karuba. Again, your final score one more time. High Point 6, North Carolina Central 4. So long from Willard Stadium. A great night for baseball. High Point with the win. Thanks for watching. You have been listening and watching HPU Baseball along ESPN+. Plus. <laughs>